All right, so now it's time for us to talk about the planning phase of consulting engagements. And so in these particular lectures early on in this course, I'm doing a lot more of talking head in addition to screen demonstration. That's because there's a lot of conceptual information to convey, and I didn't want you to have to be staring at a screen that's doing nothing for five to ten minutes. So hopefully this is useful to you. I would like to get feedback on if this is working for you so you can you know, uh, add a comment or a question or leave feedback in the review or message me directly. And uh, but for the planning phase of consulting engagements, uh, I want to revisit the Agile Accelerator and see if that's installed now. So if we click on the App Launcher, we see now the Agile Accelerator in the App Launcher. So if you click on that, the tabs in Lightning Experience Update to include tabs related to the Agile Accelerator. Now we've got the standard home, chatter, reports, and dashboards, and some of these other items that have now been installed thanks to the Agile Accelerator are work, and then as well teams, and then some of these other items get into an Agile methodology, and that would be sprints, and then as well, another one, if you click on more, you see epics. Now epics are large projects that can't be contained in a single sprint. Now you may not be familiar with what a sprint is, and so I wanna show you a couple of resources to help you get more familiar with that. But inside of the Agile Accelerator, it does have the capability of handling epics and then also sprints. Other items are the Backlog Manager, and it has some things in here by default. This is some dummy data that's installed when you first install the Agile Accelerator to help you get started. Here's the Backlog and the back burner. And I think um, I may do a course on the Agile Accelerator because there's so much to it that you can do. And this is more for project managers or Salesforce specialists that are program or project or product owners uh, or managers. And then as well, the Kanban board, this is where you move items from left to right. And here's an example here when you're getting started and you can create a Kanban board. And so I want to show some of this, though, in the Agile Accelerator, because this is a good way to visualize what we're talking about in the different phases of a consulting engagement. And so we're plowing through here in this section. And, you know, we talked about the scenarios and successful engagement phases for a project previously. And now we're talking about the planning phase. And then we're going to be getting into requirements gathering and the designing phase, the building phase, the testing phase, the documentation phase, and then deployment considerations. So I wanted to give you an idea as to where we're at in this process. But here is a sample Kanban board, and you've got your areas for in progress. This has to do with the concept of a project being a, a coding environment. So you've got code in progress, UI in progress, UI complete and ready for review. Then as well, you've got your uh, options for your different builds. Uh, if we click on builds, there should be none. You can click a new build as well. And so it's a very interactive approach. I'm going to cancel out of this. So what I wanted to show you was in the App Store, if you go back to the Agile Accelerator listing in the App Store, this is how you can get to a few helpful things. There's this link here uh, on this landing page. This will take you to the community related to uh, the Agile Accelerator. And that is here. That link takes you to this particular Salesforce success community group and you can join that by clicking the uh, plus sign here and these are all questions related to the agile accelerator and this will also get you more familiar with chatter and chatter functionality if you don't have much of that by getting involved in some of these success community groups such as this one there's group files etc but as you get familiar with or use agile accelerator or other key features of the salesforce platform it's a good idea to look for different collaboration groups that you can take part in in order to get further assistance and help and so that is one item that's available once again from this link inside of the app exchange this link will take you to uh, that community or group and then as well another thing that i wanted to show you was if you scroll down further the getting started guide and so the getting started guide for the agile accelerator if you click on that that will take you to this particular pdf and you'll see here this gives you more details now i'm recording this in the summer of 17 and so they've not updated this particular document for a year it looks like is last updated april 14th of 2016 and uh, but this will as well you'll see some of the terminology here about creating your first sprint 
And so these are all good and helpful resources, which I will link to in the resources section of this lecture, but also you can get to it through the app exchanges as I showed you previously. But this will give you some definitions around teams and sprints and epics, etc. This is all helpful information in getting you familiar with the Agile Accelerator. It gives you some screenshots on what this looks like, but also it gives you the big picture of sales methodologies and not, not sales processes per se, but development project processes that will be helpful in your sales cloud consulting career and will assist you with some of the terminology that you may run into on the exam. And so it's hard to say what specific words or verbiage you may run into. So a lot of this has to do with getting you familiar with uh, these concepts so that you can do well on the test and then in your career. So here's an example of an epic. An epic is a large user story that can't be completed in a single sprint or sometimes even multiple sprints because epics are large projects. Agile teams break them down into smaller manageable user stories. We're in the next lecture going to be talking about gathering requirements and part of that is creating user stories and this is more of a business analyst role but you may be doing this some as a consultant and they have a good example here of making a movie and that movie is an entire epic and then each scene in the movie is a user story and so then you've got these other examples of an epic with different user stories and then an android theme and an ios theme in this image here and so then finally another thing i want to point out are a couple of other things that are available and i showed this previously this is this best practices for implementing salesforce crm if I go back to where I was, this checklist to plan and prepare, we're talking about the planning phase of consulting engagements. There's some helpful checklists in here as well. And uh, these are things that you can do as you're planning a Salesforce implementation as a consultant, is that you can identify key team members, you can define your CRM vision, define the business goals and priorities, define the reporting needs, create a diagram of your main process or processes, and then you figure out how to map those processes to Salesforce. And then other things they talk about is training your administrator and then notifying and engaging users. Now we'll be stepping through a lot of these steps in later lectures, and but I wanted to show you that in this guide. And once again, that's linked in the resources section of this lecture. And then as well, another thing I want to show is... Uh, let me find this in this particular document. Some of these sections here about building a project timeline. I felt like some of this was really helpful in your understanding at this point if you're new to consulting and software development in general. And just being aware that Agile or Scrum is the flavor of the day. And SWOT is most relevant and what you'll run into for the most part. And what Salesforce is built upon and how it is best used is in an Agile environment. And so it says here that if you use a scrum approach, your timeline will consist of short iterations of the design, build, and deployment phases for a smaller set of requirements. But then with the waterfall approach, the design and build phase includes all requirements prioritized for the initial deployment. For both approaches, consider what tasks can be done in parallel, such as cleaning, mapping, and loading data. And so the main thing to keep in mind with the waterfall approach is that it's usually a larger initial deployment and it's everything is done in a major release and then they do updates in a more iterative approach. And so you'll find and see for the most part though that most of your consulting requirements gathering approaches and methodologies and projects that you do will be agile or scrum. And so as you begin to march down this path of becoming a sales cloud consultant, it is good to understand and know some of these industry terms and the different phases of a project. And this will help you understand and be holistic in your approach as far as creating a solution or solving problems on the platform so that you don't leave anything out. There's a lot of different pieces that go into becoming a successful consultant on the platform and this planning phase is very important. And so at, and really the way that I look at this for the planning phase is that you're keeping in mind everything that you need to address and that's kind of the foundation of a project and then you build upon that the different considerations and we'll be getting into those in the subsequent lectures which next we're going to be talking about requirements and gathering so I'll see you in the next lecture.